And my husband is not here tonight. He went to a uh, new, this morning they were doing um, an interview uh, regarding what's going on uh, with SOA and human trafficking. And for Telemundo, you can say Telemundo. Yeah, and for those of us, Telemundo, you know. Uh, so it took a long time to do it, and now he's at an organization that called us and wanted to, to talk to him. So pray that as God opens doors, that God gives us the grace and the words and um, the wisdom to, to just say yes to God with no reservations. Okay, so I want to pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the freedom that we have in you. Thank you, Father God, that every song that we sang unto you, Father God, that is our truth. No matter where we are in life, no matter what we're going through, that we declare and believe that that is our truth. That when death was arrested, that's when our life began. And Father, that was in 2,000 years ago. That is available today, tonight, to get a hold of our life that we have with you. And that we yield to you, we submit to you, Father. So I pray for every person sitting here tonight, for every family represented, for those who are watching my watch on live stream later on or YouTube, Father, I pray that this message, your word, your word is timeless. That people will be encouraged, that we will be challenged by your word to follow you, to follow you wherever you called us to go to obey you, Father God, and submitting and yielding our will to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Okay, so already go to Hebrews 13, 20. And um, let's see. Oh, okay, no. Go back. You, they can go to Hebrews. I don't have to go to Hebrews. Okay, no. I just want to show this. Uh, it's The message for tonight is called Prefer Picture. And... Uh, I want to take it in a way that I believe that God, well, I don't believe it. I believe it, and the word says this. In Je we, we sing it all the time in Jeremiah 29, 11, where it, says that, <clears throat> where it says that God has a wonderful plan for you. I mean, we sing it, right? For I know the plans. Remember the old deep by goody? I know the plans. Somebody help me. Come on. You know how to sing. I have for you, declares the Lord. So we sing it, right? And we know it, and it's memorized, and we, someone taught it, like Jeremiah 29, 11. And I want you to know that God has a plan for you. And in that plan, he included your flaws. He included my flaws, my ignorance. You're like, what? Yes, we are ignorant many times. And I'm going to tell you that in his perfect will, he included our weaknesses. He included all of us put together. and Because we think whenever it's the perfect will, then I need to be perfect. And the perfect will is going to look beautiful. But I'm here to tell you that his preferred picture for you, we have a choice. Everything now on social media, in the, in the times that we're living, everything is filtered. A filter. Like there is not a picture like... I don't post pictures, but even like, because I never like my pictures, to be honest with you. And even with filters, it doesn't work. Right? This is my own opinion, working on that. But I'm like, no matter what, everything has a filter. And I was reading the news, and this is true, okay? This is, this is a true story. Uh, the president of El Salvador, because I read the news here and there. And he's a young guy. He's a millennial, so like people love him, right? But he's concerned because in El Salvador, there's a lot of crime. There's a lot of things. I think it's one of the three countries, the most dangerous country in the world, right? So he was pleading on TV. He was asking the girls oh, to please stop filtering their pictures. Because then when it's time for, you know, someone gets, uh, you know, kidnapped or whatever is happening, they can't find them. Because they, the picture doesn't look like them. I mean, I was laughing, but it's true. And they show all these pictures, and they show the picture of the, which I thought, like, oh, my God, I don't know if this is, like, politically correct to be doing that. Because he showed a picture of this a girl with a filter, and then she shows this other woman that I was like, wow, is she Miss Universe, Miss El Salvador? It's the same girl. Right? But, but, and I thought it was funny, but that's the way we want to live our lives. We want to filter everything. I, know, I want my life to be filtered. 
I want my life to be good. You know, you see that home, right? Like, I want my house to look that, like, like the four seasons. Like, you know, like, I don't know, for guys, you know, you want to, you know, want your six-pack. You don't want your, you know, your keg, right? You, you want a six-pack, right? And then we post our, per, like, our favorite vacations and books that we never read, right? <laughs> like, meditating and learning. You're just posting that, you know, like. And then you see that couple, they're super happy, like, oh, my gosh, why am I not like that? Can I be Photoshopped, like? And then you look at all these things, and we're so caught up. And, and I think, the, you know, the, the airways, everything, social media, God created all that. God gave it to us to use it as a great platform. So I'm not dissing on it. I'm just saying that many times we look at that, and you think there is something wrong with you because your life your financial, uh, you have a financial struggle. You have a family struggle. You have a children's struggle. You have everything. And yet, you go back on social media, and everybody looks like they're doing great. You know, everybody's doing great. And we have, like, almost come, we have adapted to it. And when we come into churches, the churches should be the place where we say, you know what, I'm broken. The, the church should be the place where you can be you and filter. And filter. And when I'm saying filter, I don't gi- I'm not giving you permission to be like sassy and like, you know, like rude. No, I mean, I'm filter. Like, you know what? Let's put on the, take off the mask. Right? Because sometimes we feel like in order to be accepted, in order to be part of the club, right, the the kingdom club and well the kingdom club is completely different than the church club or Christianity club because God wants you as you are wherever you are in life he loves you and he hasn't changed his mind about you so I want to take you into that like God has a preferred picture about my life God has a a preferred picture about your life but you get to choose you get to choose. I wish that God would choose for me. Isn't it something that we're, we're upset because we want God to choose our husbands, right? For those who are single, God, bring him to me, right? And, and you have your list of, like, muscle, 6'4", like, you know you have all the details, right? And the guy has the same, like, funny, and I'm not going to go with their details because they're very different details, <laughs> you know? But you get the picture, right? Like, in shape and doesn't talk back and, like, <laughs> Right? We want a woman that will support me 100%. Like, come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm looking for my other half. No, you're not looking for halves. You want to look for whole people. You want to look for whole people. And if you're single, get whole. Okay, because he or she is not going to complete you. He's not your other half. She's not your other half. No, you're a whole. He's whole. And then he makes two whole people that become one. Right? That was free for you. That was free for you. Getting ready for our conference. Don't miss it. It's free. Hebrews 13, 20 says, 13 and 21 says this. Okay. This is the reality. Now, may the God of peace... Who brought you up, our Lord Jesus, from the dead, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his what? He has made us complete in every good work to do his will. Not my will, his will. Working in you what is well-pleasing. In his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know, because sometimes it's like, I think I spend a lot of years asking myself, like, am I in the will of God? You know, we are so ambivalent. In one moment, we're in, and when I'm talking about knowing the will of God, I'm talking about fo- follow, following Jesus with all your heart. One moment you're in, one moment you're out. 
one moment where you love Jesus and they have my flowers for that, you know, because I love flowers, right? They always make you happy. But we're like this. We're like, we live our life when we're not committed to Jesus. You know, maybe Jesus loves me today. Two hours later, he loves me not. I love the church. Then the next Sunday, right, when the pastor didn't say hi to you, like, I hate the church. <laughs> you came on a Wednesday and like, oh, her pastor was good that day. Right? Next Wednesday, she didn't feed me. <laughs> the church is the best place to be. I'm not being fed at the church. I love to serve. I hate serving people. I commit my day to Jesus. I don't commit it because people drive me insane. But this is the way we live many times. We live like he loves me, he loves me not. And you need to know that in your good times, in your bad times, in your all around time, God never changes. God never changes. We change. God never leave us. We leave him. God is never unfaithful. He is faithful all the time. We are unfaithful to him. Like, no, I'm not unfaithful. Yes, the moment we choose to do what we want, we are unfaithful to him. And sometimes, what's the will of God? The will of God is you, you pray in all things. Like, we want specifics. When I would tell you that his plan, like Jeremiah 29, 11, he has a plan for your trouble. He has a plan for everything in your life. It's not just like, okay, uh, my plan for Virginia is that one day she's, she's going to become a pastor and then she's going to preach. And No, that's not his plan. Okay, he had called me to do this, but his plan is that I will overcome day after day after day after day. The plan that he has for you is that you will overcome today and tomorrow you will come, overcome again. And whatever comes your way, you continue to overcome. And he says that he has made, he says, given us, we have been guaranteed to, to be able to follow God's will because he is our shepherd and we are his sheep. Say, bah. <laughs> you know, nobody likes to be. You know, what is it that when they take off the, with, yes, thank you, sir. But what's the word, though? When they're being cheered, when they take off their beautiful, that's how you wear your beautiful Uggs, because you, you were killing a Yule. But he says that the good shepherd, you know, there's something that's not even on my notes, but we're going to go there because we have time. But it's called, I what is it called? But there is a sheep. It says that the sheep, uh, sometimes a yule will have two sheep. And then he, this yule will choose one sheep. And I don't, well, in other words, I, I don't know the term, but, but come next Wednesday, I'll have the term. But there is a term for this, for this, for this sheep that the mom will reject. The mom will reject it because whatever, she doesn't have enough milk, so she's going to be, you know, she's an animal, right? So she's going to be like, hey, I only have enough milk for one. I, and then the poor sheep is ostracized. The mom will have nothing to do. The sheep will cry, and they said that out of loneliness, out of rejection, the sheep will die. The lamb will die. And they said, sometimes we deal with our lives. I have dealt with so much rejection in my life. I have had so many consequences and choices that I have made because of that rejection. And we all deal with rejection issues. If you're here sitting like, no, that's not me. But maybe today is your day that you will realize that, you know, I still have some rejection issues. So anyway, so, so like that little lamb is doomed. It's doomed because the mom has rejected and like other 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 yules don't want it. Other mom sheep they don't you know they don't want it. They already have their own. So so this sheep gets to be taken by the shepherd. 
and the shepherd can live on the barn, right? So that literally the shepherd takes him to, takes the, the little lamb to his house, and then he gets to feed the, feed the lamb. So anyways, until that baby, the lamb is ready to go into with the rest of the sheep. And they said that this is actually the best sheep, the one that was rejected. I tell you why, because this sheep knows the shepherd. The voice of the shepherd, that sheep, that first time he speaks, the sheep moves because he knows the voice. That, like literally when this sheep was rejected, he knows the shepherd in a different way, in a deeper way, in an intimate way. That sheep is hard, like doesn't get in trouble because the, the moment the, the shepherd says like, I don't know, they do whistles and whatever, right? Whatever. So they come quickly. And then the other ones have to like look around and we go to the shepherd. Should we not go to the shepherd, right? They go back here. Should I go? Should I not go? Is it the voice of my shepherd? Is it not? Is it the devil? Is it what? But see, we, God can always, God would always give us the opportunity to return, to turn rejection into something wonderful. If you've been rejected, okay, you know what? There is a plan for you. And the plan is that you will get to know your maker. And when he calls and he talks to you, that's the moment you know that you know that you know that he's speaking to you. But that takes practice to get to know the shepherd's voice. And so many times we talk, you know, and, and I mean, I said it before, like, there is the will of God, right? Have you heard it? There is the will of God. There is the permissible will of God. And there is your will. But as I've been reading the Bible and I thought about where it doesn't say in the Bible that permissible will. It doesn't really say the permissible will. It says the will of God and then you will. So we call it permissible because it feels better. Think about it. Many times I said, you know what? Well, at least I'm in the permissible God. Well, no, you just want your will. And I'm talking to myself. Maybe you're not like that, but I'm talking to myself. But the permissible will of God is never going to lead you to the preferred picture. It's going to give you to, to a permissible picture. And I have come to my life, I mean, a season of my life that I'm tired of my will. I have come to a point in my life when I have decided to fully yield myself. And you know how hard that is when you said, I'm going to surrender. And we just sang tonight, like, we're going to surrender. Like, ah, I surrender. And it feels so awesome. But when you surrender, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Let me just tell you, it doesn't feel good. Because we want control. I want to control my family. I want to control my atmosphere. I want to control my job. I want to control my finances. I want to control my relationship, a friendship. And, and when you say, I trust you, I trust you, Lord. And, and we say, like, I, okay, I surrender. Like, we come to the altar, we surrender, we put it down. And then the moment that it doesn't look like, okay, I don't know if God is really going to come through with this. Okay, then we take it back. So it's like another flower. I surrender. I surrender not. I surrender. I surrender not. No, I surrender. Then you have another good day. I surrender today. Then you go home and, ugh, right? No, I know I don't surrender. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm going to trust my uh, God in my finances. Then you look at your bank account. No, I'm taking it back. You know, it's, it's a fact. We love control. We are control freaks. Controls of what? Habit. We are creatures of habit. I love habits. I thrive in, in schedules. I love schedules because you know what? It doesn't rattle me with, 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 uh, I don't, I, well, my whole life, and I, to this day, I hate conflict. Is there any people like I like that? Like, you just, I hate it. I hate it with the passion. But you know that when you hate it with the passion and not, you're not willing to confront your issues, you know that that's out of the will of God? 
things don't go on away on his own and things don't go just away by prayer prayer is our, our, our foundation the word of God this is the word of God and I and I'm so thankful I don't know how people can live without the word of God I don't how you will not you won't be able to know his will unless you know the word of God that's what many times we think, like even sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, I prayed the same thing over and over and over and over. Well, we need to chew on the word over and over and over and over and over until it's in us. And it's not enough just sitting here and listening to podcasts. I mean, those are good tools and those are just reminders and just to keep us on track. But there's nothing. You cannot replace you yourself reading the will, the will of God because this is the will of God. He left us two testaments. You want to read his will? You can read the Old Testament and you can read the New Testament. How do I know the will of God? Read the will. Right? Even they're called testaments. When you die, you leave a testament. I'm so glad that he left the testament for you and I. He left the good news for you and I. So when we encounter trouble, we can say, you know what? It's okay because I am able to submit to the will of God and he's able to get me out of this muck. Out of whatever problem. So, I believe that God is calling you tonight. Um, I, I've been praying a lot for this message because I wanted to preach like a happy message, you know, like, like I thought, what should I do for them so they can receive? Should I dance? <laughs> you know, Lord, like, give me a, I don't know, like, give me a story that would be funny. No, he wants his children to come back. And I think many times we're deceiving ourselves and we're in trouble because we are out of the will of God. And in this life, you have one promise. I mean, we have tons of promises. But one of the promises of God is that in this life, we're going to have trials and tribulations. That's a promise. It's a promise. But he will never give us like, how is that a promise? Because he says, in this life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. But be oh, good cheer. I have overcome the world for you. But we like the overcome part, but we don't like the trials. But you cannot overcome without a trial. How can you be an overcomer? How do you overcome? Like, oh, I just say it in my head. No. No, 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 no. You have to go through some trial, some tribulation, some problem in order to see that you are able to overcome. You know, I was in Mexico and I got to preach and, uh, and I'm doing good in time. So I was in Mexico and I got to preach and I was telling my story. And we're trying to fight human trafficking. And even when we hear it, many of us are moved and say, you know what, it's, it's sad. And, you know, and we don't understand it because we don't know someone who has been trafficked. If you see a child that's 14 or 12 and living the life, you say, well, they chose that life because, you know, they were just flirts. They were like, we make all this thing with the humanized people. We have come to a point that we have dehumanized what God created in the highest people. And we don't connect with that pain. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, okay, I help. But like, and I'm talking just helping by giving money. I'm talking beyond that. And as, was, as I was listening to some stories, there were some people, some ladies that they were sharing their, their, their story. And they said, you know, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. And some... Somehow that really, this is Wednesday night, right? Tell it like it is. It really pissed me off. It bothered me. It bothered me because these are Christian people. And I was like, I'm tired of surviving. Jesus didn't die. God did not send his only son for us to survive. No, it's not. It's not the will of God. It is not the will of God for you to survive all the days of your life. It is the will of God for you to overcome. And we, let me tell you, we don't overcome just once. Because we think like, I overcame. Okay, praise God, Lord, I overcame. No, you overcome day. After day, after day, after day. I told you my, my, I've been telling you anyways, what I've been going through. 
But before I go through there, go to Hebrews 10, 36 and 38. Go ahead. So hurry up, hurry up. But I'm going to tell you that I have come to, a lot of you know, right? This is Wednesday night, so that you guys know my business. <laughs> you know my business. I decided to just, you know what? The God told me this year, you know what? Preach with your open wounds. So I am. I am because people need to know that I, I don't have to be fully walking in full 100% wholeness. I can live one day at a time with Jesus. And I have dealt the whole, for almost three years, I have dealt with deep depression. I'm talking deep depression. And I know depression because I come from that. I come from anxiety. I know what panic attacks are. Like I know feeling so hopeless. I know what it is to say I am done with life. If this is my life, I don't want it. But I also know that if I choose Jesus and because I have enough word, because in those times that there were the darkest moments of my life, because no, maybe because this battle, some battles come our way and you don't even know because life will bring battles to you. And there's battles that you create yourself because you made choices. You made, you made poor choices. And God forgives us when we repent, but the consequences will always be there. Let me tell you, that's the truth. He has given us his grace so we can overcome the decisions that we made or that other made for you or whatever. But he has given us that power within us that we can get to overcome. So I'm going to tell you, yeah, am I still depressed? Yes. Then why are you speaking? Because I am able to overcome day after day after day after day. Am I still dealing with issues? You better believe it. You better believe it. But I told the Lord, you know what? I'd rather have one day depressed in Jesus than one day without Jesus. Yes. And I think people come to, to many people, I mean, end their lives by suicide. And we can be very um, judgmental and we can create a debate do they go to heaven do they not go to heaven like you know I'm not interested about in that I'm interested in letting that people know that even with depression I thought the Lord like if I'm gonna leave that I might if I live the rest of my life in depression but I can feel your presence I can live it and I can seriously because yes I have depression but I'm not hopeless I'm not hopeless, so you don't have to feel sorry for me. I am not hopeless because I have come to receive the will of God, and the will of God is for me to overcome. Yes, I was a victim. Yes, I became a survivor, but the will of God is for me to overcome. The will of God is for you to overcome. So if I'm going to live the rest of my life like that, I told the Lord, okay, then I'm willing. And happily, and then I would, like, I've been praying, I've been saying when I preach, like, if you would ask me, like, would you return three years back, five years back? I'm like, I wouldn't change what I've been through for nothing. Because in the midst of it, I have known God in more intimacy than ever. I have, know, I have known that his word never fails, that he never changes. I might change, I might feel my emotions here and there, but he never changes. And we are afraid to feel our emotions. He didn't say be afraid to feel your emotions, but do not be led by them. Be angry at what took place. You know what? I am angry. Yes, I am angry. And I should be angry because that's filling your emotions. I am angry for the people that have hurt me, for the choices that I have made. I am angry. And God says be angry, but yet, get what? Guess what? Do not what? And we're like, no, do not get angry. You know what? I'm pissed off. That doesn't mean I'm going to live in pissed off land, right? <laughs> it is what it is. We can call it be upset. No, you know what? Piss off. <laughs> yes, I'm not your typical pastor. I'm not. And I refuse to fit the box 
to be your typical. This is me. And I'm allowing God to refine me, to perfect me. But I don't want you to be worried like, oh, pastor's going to like, is she crazy? Is she not? <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm crazy for people to know the truth and to know the true God. And the one that says, you know what? Are you depressed? That's okay because if I'm, I'm going to make it up for you. When those days that you can't hold yourself, let me hold you. But if we're not giving hope to people, like if you just praise God every day, like I used to have depression. And you know what? For many years, God just removed that. But he wanted me whole because underneath there was always this like sadness. There was always this conflict within me. But I'm here to tell you that it is beautiful to be in the will of God. I don't wish what I've been through to anyone, not even to my enemies, my worst enemy. I don't wish it, what I've been through, but I wouldn't change it for anything. And I can honestly tell you that. So there is hope. I think it's time for us to address and, and ask yourself, am I living in the will of God or am I living in my, in my permissible will? Am I living in a place that I think God is, you know what, it's okay. Like God told me, there, there's many times we say God told you and go back to the word. And then if it's in the word, then, then God told you that. But if it's not in the word, then I would doubt it. Right? You know, I went back to school. Did you hear my husband on Sunday? I think, I don't know, he said it at the end. He says, there's all people returning to school. He was talking about me. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud of it. Want to quit sometimes, right, you know. I don't know why I told you that. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you too. No, but it's, it's like, to me, it's like, you know, we can't, we put limits on God because of our, past or traumas or problems or disabilities and let me tell you I have dyslexia if I would tell you my life I'm dyslexic I don't you know I'm tone deaf I am colorblind and have a trauma and depression but then I go back and I read the bible it's like oh my god who was perfect I'm the perfect person in Jesus I go back because, well, since I've been back to school, so I enjoy the, learning the Old Testament, right? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Even dyslexia, you know what? God will, like, you know, you can overcome everything. I just read it, and I read it, and I enjoy it. I read it like 10 times to be able to understand it, right? Hey, but, I, but I'm doing it. But as I was reading, I was reading about David, and I have always loved David. I remember I told you I wanted to do my mention next to David. And now I really want my mention next to David. But as I was reading and learning, you know, about the Old Testament, about David, and, and we read his story, right? Like God said he's a, a man after God's own heart. And then you read it in his life. You read the stories, and he was such a mess. He was so emotional. He was so depressed. He was full of anxiety. He had rejection issues, right? He, he had it all, like. And then when he was a king, he committed one of the since that he will forever be remembered. We forget how many times he conquered things and he won so many battles and he let people like got forsaken. He let them back to God and we forget all that because we remember that he committed uh, murder and he committed what? Adultery. And in those times, those were capital crimes, people. It doesn't matter if you were the president, the king, you committed those crimes. You were, you needed to be put to death. But then God confronts him, and he confronts him in private because that how, that's how God is. That's how good God is. He confronts him in, in private through a friend, Nathan, right? We know the, about the prophet Nathan. And, and he comes, he tells him the story, and then he's moved. He says, who is this man? Like, he's so upset when he repents. He truly repents. And you know what? We didn't have the covenant with Jesus, but he repented, and God forgave him. Because he knows your heart. He knows when we fully repent. He knows when we're playing like, forgive me, Lord, and the next day you're doing the same thing. No, he knows our heart. He knows the motive of your heart. And then the, as I'm reading, this is not there, but it's something that I got. And, 
And then, so God forgives them, but he doesn't take away the consequences. And I think you need to know that it's every choice that you made, you have made, and God will forgive you. The moment you say, God, forgive me, he forgives you. But you have to remember that there's consequences to those sins because the, what, the wedges of sin is death. Doesn't mean he's going to kill you. It means like life is not pleasant. Sin might be good for a moment, but that's it. Then you're like, then we think that that's the grace of God. You know what I get? I have a permit that is the grace of God, so I'm going to continue to sin because God covers me. He already knows your heart. No, the grace of God is that you're able to face the consequences that came with your decisions. Whether you commit a sin or whatever or someone committed a sin on you, God will, God has a way for you and I. And I live by that grace. You know what, Lord? I'm going to surrender my bitterness to you. Do you know how hard that is to say to God, like, I'm bitter? He's like, oh, my God. You shouldn't be preaching. Bitterness is bitterness. Sin is sin. We qualify. Oh, it's a small sin. Like, I love level two, you know. There's a level two, a level five. Well, thank God I only sin at a level two or five. And thank God I never got to level 10. There's no levels. Sin is sin. The Bible says knowing what to do and you don't do it is sin. But I knew better. But you did it, sin. But it's not to shame you. It's for you to recognize, you know what, yes. Yes, you know what, I, I, I did it. Whatever, oh, they did whatever to me. But I'm going to take the grace of God and I'm going to be able to walk in freedom. I'm going to be able to walk in a shame. And that's, that's what I believe David did. He, can you imagine? Because his, if you read the story, his children, I mean, it was, it was havoc. It was, it was craziness in his, in, his, in his family. The children went against him. One of the sons took his wives. I mean, oh my God, if that would be happening today, we would be on social media. Put the, put the pastor down. Like his children's out of whack. Look at them, like... Although this was happening. And I believe that he made a conscious choice to receive the grace and the forgiveness of God. To be able to face the facts of his life. To be able to face like, you know, maybe I wasn't a good dad. But I'm going to believe that God has my family. I fell as a king. When I was supposed to be a war, I fell as a king. But God has forgiven me. And then I have to put that shame back so I can continue to rule the kingdom. But see, the devil wants us to be so ashamed. Like, shame on you, shame on you. Do you know how hard it is to stand on the pulpit and to say to you, like, hey, I'm still dealing with depression. Yep, I do have it. Because the devil wants to say, my God, what a shame, Virginia. And then I have to choose. You know what? I'm going to choose the will of God. I'm going to choose the truth of God. And the truth of God is that I am able to live shamelessly. But that's a choice. That is one day at a time, sometimes one hour at a time. The just should live by faith. Do I need to sing a song for you? Okay, let's, you, I do? Okay. Too bad there's a song here, but you cannot live like Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Oops, I did it again. And then, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, because I've been given grace. <laughs> and then three weeks later, oops, I did it again. No. No. No, grace has been given, so oops, so we won't do it again. So we can overcome. And you know what? I'm going to speak and I'm going to be shameless. I wish I wouldn't have gone through what I went through. I, I wish, I wish, and I can wish, and I can blame, and I can do all that. But at the end of the day, I have to choose. 
And I choose God. And I choose his perfect will. So how do you do it? Let us go. Hebrews 10, 36 to 38. For you have need, you have need of endurance. You need endurance. You want the will of God, you need endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. We want the promise, but we don't want to endure nothing. For yet a little while, he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So in other words, God is telling you, you know what? When you draw back, I have no pleasure. But when you fight, in any ways, I'm like, if you're hurting today, I'd rather hurt for transformation. I'd rather hurt to be right with God. I'm already unhappy, so I'd rather be unhappy, whatever, because the emotions, right? I'd rather be unhappy doing good. Because that's a lie anyways, because if we choose to live by the word of God, unhappiness should not follow me. Goodness and mercy should follow me all the rest of my life. No, that's just really by faith. My, uh, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those, you and I, because we have Jesus, we are not those who draw back to perdition. Because sometimes I feel like you, I was lost. Like, there's no way. I can't return. No, we don't draw back to perdition. We're not those who draw back to perdition. But we are those who believe to the saving of the soul. My God loves my soul. He's the lover of my soul. Whether your soul is healthy or not, he loves you. And endurance is needed. You know, many times we don't even recognize that our faith is dormant. Do you know that with God, all things are possible. 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, Who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. We have the Holy Spirit. God will never ask us to create an agreement with His Word if we don't have what it takes. We have been given a guarantee. You have an insurance policy. What is your insurance? It's called Holy Spirit. And He left us the Holy Spirit on this earth. Psalms 46.1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Are you in trouble? Call on Jesus. Call on God. He loves it when you call on him. Don't call your friend that's going to agree with you and going to tell you, like, you know, leave that church. You know, leave your husband, leave your wife, forget your children. Go back to the word of God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, and he has said this to me. This is... Uh, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, that for power is perfected in, his power is perfected in witness, weakness, most gladly, therefore, I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. But we don't li like to, to uh, boast in our, in our infirmities, in our weaknesses. And you know, this is it is, when you, when you come to Jesus, voila. He gives us his guarantee. We have protection. So you can go to, through life like this. La, 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 la. Right? And his mercies and his grace and his inheritance, he never changes. When we are in the will of God, the perfect will of God, we have protection. And I don't have, I don't have something to follow me with this. Oh, maybe you can help me. Let's see, Jessica, help me. So you're gonna follow me everywhere with this umbrella, right? And so he, he gave me the guarantee. I don't even care, he gave it to me. So you follow me. So I go here, I go there. I don't wanna be under the will of God. No, no, no. He chases you. And I'm like, Doop. You're dang it. Why? I don't want to be. I want to do what I want to do. But see, his protection, <laughs> that's God. He will chase you even when you're off, even when you're wrong. 
Even when you yourself created that battle, you should have never been in that place. You should have never positioned yourself in that place or whatever. He's covenant. He never changes. He's faithful. We run from him. And then we wonder why. Because if I do this, I can do this. Because I, can, I God has given me a free will. I can do this. You know what? I don't want it. I just want to do it my way. Let me take care of my family. Am I being too strong? <laughs> I don't want it. You know, oh, I just want to see it, but I want to do my will. And then when hope breaks loose, you're like, well, what did God help me? Did he love me? I mean, he's chasing you. He doesn't change. He doesn't change his mind. The moment we say, you know, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. This is the moment that he gets close to you because see, he is close to those who are in trouble. Like he's the closest. So what makes us think that he forgot you, that he left you? Thank you, Jessica. You're so kind. So buy an umbrella today. I just want to, well, how do I also want to tell you, how do, how do I do that? How about if you say, you know what, I, I really messed up. I, I've been doing my own will. Do you know that it's simple? Do you know that the word is alive, right? Sometimes many, we want like a 12, t- 12 step program. Like, how do I get there? How can I just be okay and be in the will of God? I want to tell you that it's so super simple. It's a choice. And you can say today, you can say, you know, Lord, forgive me for wanting to do my will, for wanting to do my dream, for not trusting you. Forgive me. And you know that the moment we call out to God, that's the moment that he is with us because he is present, present. So when your feelings and your, or your depression is telling you, you are alone. No one understands you. That's when you need to be reminded, no. Do you know how I fight my battles? I said, nope. He is present in my time of need. He is my refuge. I don't feel it. But I believe it. And I'm believing that he's healing my brain. He's healing my heart. It's going to connect with my heart. But I'm going to continue to say that until I'm walking in it. How do you do that? How do you go back? I think you need to read your Bible. You have to feed yourself. Read your Bible. Start with one chapter. Please read your Bible. Know your testament. Know what God left you. He didn't lift you alone, so leave you alone. So read what the word of God says. Start reading the word for you. Fall in love with Jesus. Know that no matter where you are in life, even if a battle came to you or you encounter the battle whatever even if you created your own fight he's not interested in that he's interested okay then we are here now what are you gonna do are you gonna trust me or you're not gonna trust me so every day you get to choose so I want to pray for you and I want you to if this message spoke to you it starts with bravery I was very vulnerable with you you don't have to be with me it's up to you But I believe that I need to make a call and I need to ask you that if this message spoke to you and you're choosing to now, you know what, I might have been off, but today I'm making a choice to be right with God. I'm making a choice to get hold of that insurance that he has given me, that guarantee that is called the Holy Ghost. That you decide to walk without shame no matter what you've done because Jesus forgives you. Because he died for you not to survive but for you to overcome. And you overcome every day, every single day. You are able to live overcoming. So that's you. I want you to stand up. Just stand up. You know, I'm standing up with you. I will sit but I'm, I can't. But stand up. So what? If you're like, oh, no, someone's going to see me. What are they going to think that I've been in, in sin? Do you know that when God talks about the perfect will, do you know that even sin is included there because he knows you? So you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. Nothing to lose. So you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. You gain the God of peace. 
the God who forgives you, the God who makes you right, because through Jesus we have been made right, and you can make your life right by agreeing with his word. So if you're standing by the beautiful people and brave people that decided to stand up, I want you to lay hands on them because we're going to agree. Maybe our prayer team can go around and just lay hands on them. And we don't believe in the power of prayer and the power of agreement because that's what the Bible says, that where two or three are gathering, his name there he, are, he is in the midst of us. So find somebody, lay their hands on it, come on, get up. Go find somebody. If you're well enough, get up and lay hands. Okay, so everyone's laying hands. There's no one alone standing. Okay, thank you. Well, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the boldness. The boldness of your children that no matter where they've been, no matter what they've done, I thank you that today they're saying, Father, I want your perfect will. I want your preferred picture. I thank you that today, Father, you have given them the grace to confront their issues, to confront their struggles, to confront their past. And I thank you that today they know that there is nothing impossible for you to those who believe you, to, to choose to believe you. So, Father, I agree with them and I say, I'm not laying hands on them, but I'm in full agreement, Father God. And I thank you that today will mark a new season in their lives, Father God. Today that they will know that they're forgiven, that they will know that your plan of success and goodness still stands firm because you're a God who doesn't change. You're a God who knows all things. So, Father, you know whether they're brokenhearted, whether they're going through financial issues, whatever it is, Father, I thank you that you will show yourself big on their behalf and they will know that they are able to overcome, that they're able to live, they're able to declare that your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the rest of their lives. And if you agree with me and you believe, I want you to say amen. Okay, you may be seated. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know that it's, it's not easy being cheesy. No. No, just kidding. It's not easy standing up in the church. Believe me, it's not easy. Because many times, people will judge us. And they will say, but why are they standing up? But there is a God who loves you so much, he doesn't judge you. Actually, in heaven, like, Yes my son, my daughter, they have come back to me. And I'm going to believe that there, today is a new day for you, a new season. The year is not over. As a matter of fact, the Jewish year just started. We have been engrafted, right, in his family. So, hey, I told, I reminded myself, praise God, my year just started. You know, I'm not bound by this time. I'm bound by the perfect timing of God. And his perfect timing, guess what? It's always perfect. So I don't want to assume that all of us here have a personal relationship with Jesus. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And just be praying for people that are around you. But I want to give you an invitation. And that invitation is that you have tonight the opportunity to, to get right with God. What does that mean? It means that you choose to give your pain to give your sins, to give your life unto God because his plan is better than yours. And his plan that he has is to prosper you. His plan that he has is to, is to give you hope in a future. That's how good he is. You have a God of peace who loves you so much and he sent his only son so you can live on this life overcoming but he also sent his only son and he left you an inheritance and he is giving you eternity with him. You need to know where you're going if you, if you die. Like, I hope I go to the good place. No, you don't need to hope. You need to know. So if you don't know, today is your day to say, you know what? I receive that. I believe it. I'm going to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to receive his goodness, his plans for me. And I'm going to believe that I'm able to overcome. So that's you at the count of three. I just want you to raise your hand. It's a simple prayer, 30-second prayer. So that's you. I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Is there anyone here saying yes to Jesus? I see the hand. Thank you so much. Okay, say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. 
be my savior. Thank you for giving me a plan and a purpose, for giving me hope, for dying for me on the cross so that I can be saved, so I can be secure, and I can overcome on this life. Let your will be done in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome.